Welcome everyone, we cannot only do vintage urban Denver, we can also do latest and greatest Thunderbolt fun because not only do I not buy new Macs, so I need to have a couple of more years with my aging Retina MacBook Pro because pick bugs, keyboards and whatnot and certainly for this I want to upgrade graphic performance a little bit for daily work and video editing and such but also we test here latest and greatest other stuff for example the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon and eventually we certainly need some more amazing Thunderbolt stuff to test all the latest and greatest features. So what I got here is my first Razer product ever, Razer Core X PCIe Thunderbolt Exclosure. Of course you need to bring your own GPU. Let's quickly unbox this and see how this goes. Because I think this experience might not be the most seamless, especially on Linux maybe, but we certainly test everything over the course of the next months. I intentionally got the cheaper one. There's also the newer edition or something, but it is nearly twice as expensive. Here's some power cable because you can never have enough of those. Support Razer. This is Support Razer. Thank you for choosing support. I'll support it. Sounds a little bit like they want support though. Core X and what is here? Some here. Yeah. The reviews already mentioned they're super short. Yeah, this is a little bit of a joke. Cable also here already some folds there, so yeah, cable could definitely be shorter as you can see. Because the online reviews were mixed, maybe even worse for the new one. I took the cheaper one for initial testing and getting the hang and experience and the more expensive version mostly only comes with additional ports like Ethernet and USB and such which although we have this failing TG3 so you can see not the most elegant unboxing here this certainly has a little bit room of unboxing improvements So the Razer core actually quite huge. I mean it is slightly ridiculous in my opinion. This dongle stuff, this is why for many years I refused to buy any of this. Because as you see in this size you get a full blown desktop PC. This is of course slightly ridiculous. Actually I thought it's slightly smaller. So much to reading the sizes because place a external GPU in a box set otherwise is smaller with a full mini ITX system but this is everything we do here for all the review and testing experience because in my opinion with such size of an external GPU enclosure you can actually really run a full-blown desktop maybe we can just mod this and install a full mini ITX system in there hmm. so size wise I'm definitely not impressed But it's certainly GPU sizing guide. Mm -hmm. The front here also feels plastic, I think. Actually, I thought this is full out of metal. But here, yeah, there you have it. And as I said, let's see port wise here. Yeah, this cheap one doesn't have any ports. So, of course, I would have preferred the version with Ethernet and USB. But that is what we get for being cheapskate and wanting something just for testing. Due to my surprise this already just comes out is this okay this, this is apparently maybe locking I oh, hear yeah, this is here directly locking with this thing so I'm not sure why you would want to change this very often but if you want you could do that. Remove before use no kidding as if we would have left this inside there but for all those dummies you have this spelled out there and otherwise this here is of course just the shell completely empty and this slides in there is all the electronics for the PCIe based Thunderbolt USB C kind of transfer stuff. The next we need to, as we are still only ramping up our cheap skateness, we need to remove our nearly only at least usable modern anyway PCIe GPU out of here of this mini ITX board but as I said so size wise I would really have preferred if that is smaller but then maybe everyone just installed there the latest and greatest hot and energy 
burning NVIDIA thing in there and then it needs to be that huge. But yeah, I also wish, by the way, there would be just the PCBs that you can retrofit some case thing here yourself and don't need to buy the whole expensive aluminum exclosure because actually I don't really need that so much. It's just the PCB would have been more than enough for me. Otherwise here our amazing Ryzen Mini ITX build from the other year that is still amazing and one of our few new PCIe AMD GPUs for testing. Of course we will also test how this works in macOS so no worries there. And as you probably can see size wise a little bit unmatching dimensions. Let's see where is this slightly hard to get out of there with this release pin here. So then let's install that into here. Lines PCA connector there. Whatever. By the way, as we are also great fans of Friday for Future, a little bit much packing material here. Not really sure that here something can fly around. Maybe just make this cardboard or not do this dummy stuff in there at all. Then what do we have here? So here is what looks like a more or less regular power supply, I guess. And then here, of course, a PCB for the Thunderbolt controller, which by the way is um, hard to read from here. Need to take a look closer. There you see also the ridiculous, not only is it super huge, also price wise, 299 or so for this slightly older edition here. Yeah, I wish it would just be PCBs, totally overpriced in my opinion. Why did I buy this? There are not so many others, the others cost similar. And then when I pay already similar prices, I at least wanted to have some a little bit stylish or so. And then we have here more PCIe connectors with some cable management tie here. That is of course medium nice, not that a cable tie costs so much, but whatever. So three pin, three pin, oh, actually there are multiple cable management ties. They saved no costs on those little guys here. So they are both the same, six plus two, in case you need those additional ones for even more high performance GPUs in the future. So then, of course, also fix your GPU here with the screw. And let's better hope this expensive piece of thing also works. Of course, normally you would install a slightly more performant card in there. But this is just for initial performance testing and such. So let's see how that is going. So let's plug it in and power it up. And for 299, they could have really put in here a more lengthy Thunderbolt cable, in my opinion. I wonder, probably have to test if a regular USB-C cable will work. I have the feeling maybe not. Let's see, three, three, both of three, okay, whatever. Yeah, plugging it in. Just realized here some protection plastic on there. This is the first time I remember ever seeing this. This is really ridiculous. Stop one time use plastics. This is hilarious. This might or might not be connected to some of those displays there. And then of course, we can't even test it with this Max because Apple wouldn't be Apple if all those connectors are already outdated. So let's start directly testing this with this one here. Plus here. Does it even have a power button, soft power button, or maybe it starts automatically with this power here, maybe. So I wonder with this modern docking stuff how long these connectors really last, because USB-C connectors in my opinion not the extremely highest. So this is already charging and this is actually having the fan blowing now, so far so good. Then here on the ThinkPad, of course, my BetterFS Innovate My S installation. Let's see how that is. Oh, wait a second, I should have. Okay, then don't have my portable SSD in there for booting. Anyway, then let's see what Windows is doing as a quick test. This would be something to test anyway. A new Thunderbolt device. To share this, click here. What? 
Mm. Whether core x connect always connect probably for memory DMA copying all your passwords out of system memory reasons but maybe we don't have a Windows driver because Windows is of course not as amazing as Linux here in terms of uh, here it really shows already in this overview that it has here some VGA compatible not fully installed thing. It's of course also funny that it lists here a lot of PCI bridges. Slightly wonder why they are necessary here. So yeah, so Windows lists is in theory um, download over or maybe I don't have Wi-Fi anyway. Okay, maybe it's not. Maybe I should actually connect Wi-Fi then. Okay, with Wi-Fi Windows indeed starts to configure this device. Let's see if this automatically works. Not the biggest surprise there certainly. Should eventually work and um, if it ever configures there, whatever, but size-wise, of course, slightly ridiculous. In my opinion, a little bit too large there. Maybe the version 2 is slightly smaller. And yeah, for 299, not only could they include a larger cable, you see you can barely position this if you put this somewhere decent on the desk. Have it a little bit hard with this short cable. And yeah, 299, in my opinion, the version 2 or something is 599 or so, ridiculously overpriced. And in my opinion, 299 is really a maximum here for this external enclosure and should actually include USB and also uh, Ethernet already. But um, yeah, leave me in the comments below what you think here for the pricing of those devices. And uh, in general, I'm not really sure if this is the most amazing future when in the past we could have had a full high performance PC in there. And now we have this external dongle hell for, mm, yeah, and then also how long do this connectors last? But that is what we are here for to evaluate and review. So don't forget to share, like and subscribe for all the next great fun to come with us.